Hi everybody, this is Carl Leopson, your instructor for CERT 590 at the University of Arizona. And this is a short video about withdrawal versus reversal designs. What's the difference? Um, a lot of folks use those terms interchangeably, but somebody like you who's taken a course in single case research design uh, probably ought to be clued into the difference. So let's take a look. First, let's talk some basic nomenclature, and we haven't done this before, so it's good to get it out on the table. Um, baseline in single case research design is, is referred to as the A condition, right? So the A is baseline. B is intervention, or a change in the conditions. A1 is the first baseline, B1 is the first intervention condition. Then when you turn around and go back to baseline in a withdrawal design, that's A2, okay? That's a return to the original baseline condition. B2 is returning again to the intervention condition that you had in place during B1. An A or a B, now particularly in your book, and, and not everybody does this in the same way, but researchers, um, if they want to make a change to the baseline conditions along the way through their study or to the intervention conditions, um, a lot of times they'll add a little mark, a little apostrophe next to the A or B. Sometimes in their uh, graph they'll write the intervention plus something else. Um, that just means that they've altered, and we'll take a look at what that means. C, the C condition um, means you've just headed off into a completely different intervention after the B intervention. It's not the same, not just an addition or a change in conditions. Or it could be your maintenance phase. It could be you've removed things and gone back. Um, or sometimes your maintenance condition is, is kind of like your A condition, um, but longer. Know the nomenclature, but also know that researchers mess with it, okay? And, and one thing you're going to see throughout this course, and I hope you learn in this course, is that once you learn the basics of single case research design, you'll see that folks mix and match the pieces together to get the right design they need. It's not always completely straightforward, A, B, A, B, multiple baseline. There are lots of different ways to do these designs. So let's take a look at this next piece. Um, basic withdrawal design, okay? Remember the goofy study we're following throughout this course, um, providing additional light in a room increases reading rate by a young child? The A condition here, um, the baseline condition, is not con business as usual. It is actually starting with dim light. Okay? Now we could say we went into a classroom and that's the way the light was and so we want to change it. So we are starting with business as usual. Um, but your baseline condition can also be just some conditions that you set. All right. so, Usually baseline in, in the kind of intervention we work we do in natural settings is, is the current conditions of the situation, the current conditions of the environment. Um, but baseline can be set up conditions, researcher designed conditions. Okay. Um, intervention, it may be that you are applying reinforcement to a replacement behavior, but it also might be that you are just changing conditions in the environment. Okay. Um, B is the return to the original conditions um, at the baseline and the intervention return to original intervention conditions. So for us in this study, it's dim light, bright light, dim light, bright light, okay? Simple. So let's look at another withdrawal design. Um, in this case, 
This is from a, a study that I've done with a doctoral student, um, and it's uh, the, the focus of my research, which is adjusting, adjusting function-based interventions to help teachers implement them with better treatment integrity or fidelity. So what we did here is we, we got the um, on-task behavior of the student and the implementation of the teacher. So really it's teacher implementation here that is our dependent variable. Um, and we measured the student's on-task behavior during the baseline. And then we implemented the function-based intervention. Then that was the B phase. And then we just adjusted the function-based intervention a little bit. And we adapted it to include some reinforcement for the teacher using the interventions. And then we went back to taking away those reinforcements for the teacher. And then we put them back in. So really it was an A, B, an alter B, back to the B, and then to an alter. Okay. So what happens in a reversal? Why would a reversal design be different from a withdrawal design? In a reversal design, what they do is really a little odd. Um, what they do is re try to reinforce an incompatible behavior. So they would have baseline conditions for something like on task, off task. Okay? Seated, standing, running, walking. Two behaviors that can't happen in the same space at the same time. They're either, somebody's either doing one, or if they're not, they're doing the other one, right? So let's say um, we were looking at on task, off task. Baseline conditions we measure on task, or off task behavior, or say measure on task behavior. On task behavior is at a low level. Um, and then we apply reinforcement to a replacement, which is on-task behavior, and it goes up. In a reversal, what somebody would do is say, I'm going to actively reinforce off-task behavior using my same intervention. That's just going to prove how great my intervention is. Okay, um, And so they would try to actually reinforce a kid or an adult to engage in the opposite of the replacement behavior, the incompatible behavior. So they, if they had reinforced somebody to spend more time in seat, then they would use their intervention, whatever it was, to try to get them to spend more time out of seat. The whole goal here is to, for the researcher to demonstrate that it is their intervention is really powerful, right? And it really has a lot of control. Let's look at an actual example. You won't see many of these, and so these are it's hard to find examples. Here's one from your book. I'm glad they found it because I think they are hard to find. In this case, um, some researchers were looking at um, creativity in children's drawing. Okay, and so what they did was just have general praise during baseline, then they had descriptive praise for diversity. So they said, they might say, I love your drawing because it looks so different from Sarah's drawing. And I like the way yours is different from everybody else's. Right? So they, they had descriptive praise for difference. Then they said, I, we can try to use this descriptive praise. It's really powerful stuff will show that we can turn it in the other direction or that if a teacher is praising sameness, that's what they'll get. And so they said, started to say, Sarah, I really love your drawing because it's just like Johnny's. Um, which is a really odd turn of events, right? But what they're trying to show is the power of descriptive praise in creativity. And then they turn it around at the end and they go back to praising for diversity. All right, again, you're not gonna see reversal designs very often. And most of the time you're gonna hear people talk about withdrawal and reversal designs as the same thing. 
But now you know they're not the same thing. So if you run across this in the field, um, or you run across it at work, or you run across it on the BCBA exam, um, you will know a little bit more than everybody else. All right? Take care.